We are here to bring you everything and anything surrounding Porsche. I'm Mike. I'm Aaron. And this is P-Car Talk. All right. Welcome to another episode of P-Car Talk. I am Mike. And I'm Aaron. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. We appreciate everybody out there. We got a list of people to thank, right, for Double. Patreons and some new renewal memberships and yep. some new memberships, right? All of them. I'm going to let Aaron handle that. All right, here we go. <laughs> top, of the, top of the show. All right, so we got our producers for the our Patreon. That's Brandon J., Eric A., and then Robert G. And then we have our Sriracha Boys, which is Scott H., Matthew G., Brian R., Matthew M., Sean H., Nikki F., mm-hmm. just a... Yeah, they make sure. that on there. Make some motherfucking noise. Thank yeah. you, guys. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah. And then we have our club members. So we opened up the club just in case you forgot or didn't let, listen to it last week. Yeah. We, we had, had a some, waiting list, right? Waiting and we list. had a couple of non-renewals that yep. we were able to, like, hit up some new people, basically, on the list, right? Yep. So we got the new guys. We got Brian R., Matt M., David S., Ernest D. Welcome to the fam. Welcome. And then we have renewals for the second year. Second year renewals. We've got Dennis H, Gregory L, Brian W, Daniel L, Bill N, and Michael P. And Way to stick with it. Third year Way renewals. Way to stick with it. Because we're there. We're there already. I know. I Andrew G, Ed L, Kevin M, Foster B, and Casey W. Those are all G's right there because if yep. you're a three year member, you're, in. you're heavy hitting right there. You're ranked up. Yeah, you're not. You're not a pond scum anymore. <laughs> You got you to put your time in. Two levels above. Want to thank all of them so much, uh, all the Patreon members. Uh, if you go to pcartalk.com, you can become a Patreon member. You can also sign up on that waiting list yep. that we talked about because it is closed again, so the waiting list continues to grow. If you received an email and you didn't act on it because Aaron did say there was an opportunity and he gave a time frame on it, so it was first come, first serve. If you're wondering what happened to you and you didn't sign up, you're back on the waiting list, so that's back what's on. happened to you. Um, just a heads up on that with a little housekeeping but again yep. thank you thank you guys so so much um, we would love to consider you to join the patreon club if you could do that um, and join the waiting list see if you can become a p car club member um, you get so many benefits with both i don't want to bore you if you're an avid listener um, you know what you get and if yep. you're not an avid listener use your eyes get on the website and read yeah, it use your eyes all right so let's get rolling let's um so Update on the GT3. So yeah. I know everybody who's kind of following me on social. I had some headers that we were going to put on the car. I was excited. Well, come to find out, those headers aren't going to work with the primary bypass, the one with the valve, because of the bracket that comes down to support that actual muffler that holds it on there. So my theory behind it was I wanted to have it kind of loud and be able to like control it valved wise. I know they sell an aftermarket valved one that can go with that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not what I'm going to go with. So now. We've, I've contacted Seoul. I've got something on order. It's going to be six to seven weeks. So we're going to do a primary bypass as well. So it's going to be no cats on the headers, primary bypass, and then no bypass on the rear. So it's so going straight, to be straight cup cup. The of pipes. Yeah, and then the Softronics tune on it. Um, and then it'll just probably sound like the world's ending at all times. And It's okay. No one will ever want to ride with me or be behind me or whatever, but whatever. 964. We'll, fi- we'll figure it out. Yeah, that's. I figured that's, hey, that's a 964 life. Part for the course. We get that done on that end. Cayenne right? as well. So Exactly. So Aaron's update, he's moving soon. He's moving yeah. closer to me. I know he. some that know us avidly, Aaron and I uh, live probably about an hour and some change apart. Yeah, about an hour. He's going to be about 10 minutes away now, so that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so su- super excited with that. So maybe more things to come. Probably sp- not. Like Same amount. We're not doing anything more. I'm just closer. <laughs> more more pop-up stuff maybe. <laughs> oh, that's true. We can definitely um, do a lot more of maybe that. Maybe some more lives too because like, we'll be around each other yeah. when we're maybe just downtown St. Pete. We'll and do some we, more live stuff. Um, when we bring back the uh, the PCAR meetups, that's definitely happening in St. Pete. Yeah. So. No, for sure. And um, also want to thank everyone who – when we posed you the question that reached out to us on social media yeah. last week with the $50,000, what are you guys going to do? What are you buying? What are you buying? Any of that kind of stuff. Um, we did have a handful of people that, that reached out onto us on social and like gave us in detail what they were going to do. Um, but I'm glad that they did. Um, I think we had one more. It came in as like a DM or something, right? Yeah, it was a DM. Okay. So this was a DM. So not everybody got to see this. Um, so just finished with last week's podcast, $50,000 choice. I would start by buying a 912. 
uh, something complete running and driving, but not super nice. I found several for 25k that would be perfect. I could do my own metal work, paint, shell, knock out pretty cheap, 2k with a cage, then purchase a 1.7 from a 914 for 500 bucks. So this is pretty detailed. Like he already has a game plan. What he would do? Yeah, may not be playing this. Yeah. Um, send it to Jake Rabby, and he'll make it a two seven, making around two hundred horsepower for about thirteen grand. Gives him around ninety five hundred to throw at wheels, suspension. The purpose would be lightweight, narrow body, rowdy street car, double as a track uh, car and day car. Built right, I would say, would be forever Porsche that I could, a guy could decide to live and enjoy his whole life with. At least that's what I hope because that's my plans. So, <laughs> well, thank you for sending that. I really appreciate that. That is uh, Nathan W. who sent that in, and um, clearly that is a man with a plan. He is very a detailed, detailed and uh, thank you for being so detailed. And I wanted to share that with everybody because some people were kind of just really loosey goosey about it, and we wanted to hear details and we wanted to hear why. And he definitely gave us all of those reasons and the and the the finite details behind it. I like that, man. I love, you know me, I'm an outlaw guy. I yep. like everything modded, everything he's talking about. I If I saw that car somewhere, I'd be like, hell yes, I can get on board with this. So I hope Nathan makes that happen. Uh, and if you do, Nathan, you once you start that process, send us pictures. We'll definitely repost it and get it going and show everybody yeah, else out there cool. what you're doing. Because I think there's a lot of guys out there and girls who probably want to do something like that because you have to be creative. Uh, just piggybacking yeah. onto our last episode, not to go too far in depth. Mm. You have to be creative with your money now because it is, it doesn't go very far, right? So nope. he's definitely being creative with his money right there. And, and I think for, he's doing an awesome job with that, with that lump of money that, you know, you'd be given. Um, so yeah, get creative with your money, I guess, is the purpose of like prior episode with that 50 K. Um, and it's an air cooled, so you get to go to some cool stuff. Exactly. And like you said, it's narrow body. Those are super light. I like that, that lightweight concept. That's a lot of power. Uh, for a lightweight car, yeah. that thing will probably scoot, man, um, for sure. So, GT3 Touring's hitting all the press areas, testing, reporting, all that stuff coming back. We knew this was coming because as the progression of the cars were coming out, I think uh, one of the things that's resonating with me a lot with all these journalists and all these YouTubers or whatever the hell you want to call them, um, they're saying it's a no-cost option to get a Touring, which mm -hmm. is not incorrect by saying that. However... You still need an allocation to get that car. Yeah. Like it isn't just like, oh, I'm going to, I have a GT3 allocation. I'm just going to get a touring. Mm. No, they still tell you what the allocation's for. They're like, no, this is for the winged one. This one's for the touring. Because they split up the different models exactly. this year, which exactly. they've never done before. Exactly. But that your, your allocation designation matters what you're going to get. <laughs> it isn't if you get a random GT3 mm. collect, uh, allocation, you're going to say, I'm going to make mine a touring. You have to have a touring allocation. No one's talking about that, but I just wanted to bring that to light. Um, how do you feel about this car? We talked about it a little bit. I don't want to go too far into it. I'm still, and the reason why I'm bringing it up again, because it, it, it makes me twitch a little bit, but how do you feel about the option of PDK in a touring? I guess that was bound to happen. Does that make it less cool for you though? I, mean, I thought that was like a cool thing. Like, you know, almost kind of like you could see a touring from yeah. a distance and you go, no, you already man, knew it was a manual. manual. Yeah. Now everybody has to do the basically under the skirt check. It's like, oh, are you a boy or are you a girl? It's well, like yeah, you, you're mean, first covering your private parts. It's like, oh, okay, so you you're, even, you're, you're a girl. Well, right now you can't even tell a difference, even even from like glancing because that, that uh, the automatic. Yeah, the way the it's set up. Exactly. exactly is the, uh, but all you got to do is look at the paddles. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's yeah. what I usually do. I mean, it just makes the touring more touring. Yeah. It's meta. I mean, it gives you an extra, if you want it to be chill, even more chill than it is without a wing. Mm -hmm. And still the, the GT power plant. That's just options. How do you feel about the, the two cars? Would you... If you had to pick one and you were in that position, what would you pick? Would you pick a touring over a, a over a wing GT3? I don't know. I think the wing's just something. I mean, if I'm going GT3, I feel like that's that's why I got it. That's why I want the wing. Yeah. I don't. I mean, but if I had two, like if there was a Matt Mormon situation where I had an RS already. Do you think age is a factor? Else. Meaning, like, let's say if you're 55 and above, do you feel like maybe like all the, the PCA is going to have a touring? Well, the wing is a little too, like, and yeah. RSs are a little too boy racer-ish. And maybe. do you feel that, like, maybe you want to be, have fun, but you want to 
maybe be more adults if that makes sense. Well, if things. you knew yourself and you said, you know, I'm not, gonna, I'm not I'm never going to the track, but mm-hmm. I'll do some mountain driving and I want something that's. Yeah. That scoots and makes, it. and, yeah. and it's a GT product. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that the split between track person and then just mountain driving or, and chill. or the other option you yeah. mentioned before, if you're, if you're balling well enough where you can have yeah. both and you can get both. Like I, I see that too. I mean, I guess. Do you think it's interesting that they're almost making a lineup of GT cars now? Cause they've split up those two variants. Now they have variants. Now mm-hmm. it's not just the, the one. And then we said wing or no wing. That's, yeah. I, that's, that's interesting. I, it's easy to say, obviously it's a- after the fact. Um, but I really did believe with the nine, nine, one generation when they came out with that car and I'm speaking dot one and dot two, especially when that touring got involved, I almost could see the writing on the wall eventually that there was going to be a lot of more GT products down the road because mm-hmm. think about it from the, th- those cars are sold before they're made. Like it doesn't oh, yeah. get any better than that for There's Porsche. No problem that. Like well, that any, area. any manufacturer, if you make a special car and it's sold before it's even made, that's money in the bank mm. for them. Um, so if you have a product like that, why would you not try to do as much spin off of that, that you could to say, we've got six GT cars and they all sell out before they're even sold and yeah. what have you. So it doesn't surprise me. Does it surprise you at all? I don't know. I don't think it, everybody always talks about diluting the brand or diluting a GT car. It doesn't really dilute anything, but I mean, it's, I'm, it's just weird because unless there's way more to it this time for the tourings mm-hmm. than in the past, then really no wing wing, yeah. there, there might be a lot more to it. And that's why there's a separate line or they just wanted to see. I don't think it is. It's what they sold. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't think it, it is that different it, mm. other than like va- basically visuals. Yeah. I mean, from the, from the engineering layout, it's identical. I mean, there's a few other options you can do with that car that you can't do with the other one, meaning the front bumper, that fascia, you can get that painted body color as an upcharge on a touring. That's an option, but you mm-hmm. can't do that on it on the wing GT three that mm-hmm. you can't get that painted body color. So there's an option. So you can it's, make a, it, you can make yeah. it, you know, more gentlemanly, like, I guess mm-hmm. if you want, as opposed to boy racer ish. Um, I'm, I'm kind of with you with the uh, diluting of the brand thing. Um, I think they don't look at it that way, though, because I think they're looking at it at, in the fact of how many more. It's free advertising for That's them, right? Like you're paying, too. Yeah, you're paying me to drive this $200,000 car, and you're going to go flex, so everybody's going to see it. So it's also advertising for me. So they're probably thinking of it that way, too. How many more of these can we get out there? So do you think there's equal allocations between the both, between each? That I don't know, and there hasn't been any uh, there hasn't been any info on that. Um, but I would say, a betting man, I would say that would be equal in allocations. I, I would think so. What do you think they're able? You know what? That's maybe a, a, a sneaky way they can double their allocations. That's what I mean. Yeah. So maybe ten thousand and ten, maybe twenty thousand gets sold in nine nine two. I don't know if it's going to be that high. I don't know if the numbers are that high. Yeah. I don't think they're that high. But if, even if it's if it's twenty five for the wing winged one and it's twenty five for the other one, that's five thousand total. When it instead of lumping them all together under mm. the twenty five hundred realm, yeah. now you're going to see are going to definitely going to see a lot more tourings. Um, but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing for me as an enthusiast. I maybe that'll push the price point down if there's more of them. Yeah. Just kind of like at least in theory, the whole. Porsche market screwed everything up. I think it was on that train before everybody started dumping whatever money they had from housing, crypto, whatever it was back into the cars. Um, because the nine one ones were trending dot ones were mm-hmm. trending down to that low $100,000 range before it was in that, that spiral. Um, until I guess the last 12 months happened and then they started trending back up. So I think because of that, it screwed its curve up because I really do think that car would have hovered right around 105, 110 mm. um, when these are becoming abundant, the meaning the 992 everywhere, if if everything was supposed to go the way it was. Because if you look at trends in the Porsche world, generation-wise, it's not the one it just came out. It's the one prior to that, like two generations yeah. essentially ago, is the one who's supposed to bottom out. And it didn't really get a chance to bottom out because of this market influx. So... I don't know if it's ever going to happen. Now I wonder if it's just going to sustain where it's at mm. because I mean, some of them have gone up by a lot. You yeah. Know, they were, I, I was paying attention pretty close to them because I was hunting and 
I think I saw some right around 120, but that lasted like two or three weeks yeah, it's total. Not that. It's in the one. They're in the 140s now. No, I know, but I'm saying sure. that yeah. lasted like two or three weeks, and then they were all just like back up, and it's like shit. <laughs> yeah, everybody's hunting them. Everybody's like, you know what? I think I'm getting an M1. Mm-hmm. It's a great car. I mean, and then like some of the GT3 heads, you know, like we talked to Albert about. It. He's like, well, you know, they go say they're like, it's not, it's not a GT motor though. Yeah. So they always go with that. So yeah, I'm happy. With, I'm happy with the 997. It's Metzger. It's a GT. It's a real GT motor. <laughs> it's a real sunroof. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but you know, someday maybe it's going to be the special one, right? Because it's the only one ever. It's got a sunroof. It's true. Which I think is a blah statement. I wish it didn't have a sunroof, actually, to be honest with you. But who knows? You know, you know how it works. Unique shit, because it's a one off or it's a a one generation run. Mm. That was the argument with the 996s, and I think it still will be at some point because of the headlights and all that. Excuse me. That's in white. So that works. Yeah. So 2024 Porsche 911 Turbo S E Hybrid. Yep, that's right. You heard it. So hybrid at the end of the thing, and that is very, very important. So 2024. So the uh, 911 electrified testing has begun mm-hmm. um, already. This car has been spied. Um, if you think about it, this year's kind of almost over already. So this is only two and a half years away. If not that, well, yeah, at least testing. I'm saying like till it's more, like yeah. in somebody, it's being delivered. 2024 oh, yeah. is like a delivery time frame because so. so that means the end of 23. So they're thinking no power numbers have been an, released yet. So they're everyone's thinking that this thing is going to debut sometime in 2023 mm. as far as like, hey, dun da 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 here it is. And then those purchasing, obviously, that year will be getting, yeah, being 2024 models. um, That'll be happening. So this is a lot sooner than we even talked about in prior episodes uh, about this happening. Are you shocked by this? Yeah. uh, I think it was a lot. I don't know why they're speeding up the timeline. or uh, You know what? I don't know. I would say they're speeding it up. But maybe they're just saying the general interest in electrification because the Taycan sold a lot more than they ever thought. It was they're faster for the full EVs. Uh-huh. And I don't know. I truly don't know what to think about the, the SUVs or the Cayman Boxster full EVs coming out. Then I guess they need the 911 to be somewhat light. So, like, yeah, we kind of have something that's electrified. It's hybrid. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, from, from everything that they, that um, Bloom was talking about before, it was going to be years or at least made it sound like well it. you made it sound like it wasn't any times happening like so so was that like a was that a, a deliberate curveball when he was interviewed with that to probably. for for the shocker news that they because i mean come on it's like he knew that shit was going to happen mm. he just probably didn't want to share it um what do you think horsepower numbers are going to be on this thing Crazy. probably stupid 800 i mean think about the current turbo s how fast it is yeah i mean and that's full combustion so this is going to be a helper electric motor on top of it so Again, we've talked about this before. Yes, at speed and when you're in, I guess you can't even call it eco mode, but let's just call it normal mode, like cruising. This thing's going to help it get way better gas mileage. Not that they got horrible gas mileage before anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I understand with this, this it's going to be integrated with the motor. Like I it's going to be, be like the Vaughn thing. Exactly. From, so it's uh, going to work. Word. It's going to work together. It's not going to be an on-off switch type of deal. Okay. Like It's not going to be like, okay, it's going to cut out after 30 miles an hour. These things are going to basically coexist in the same kind of unit. So I'm going to call, I'm going to call it now. I'm going to call it 850 horsepower for the Turbo S. I think so. I think that's the range. I think that's, I think that's where it's going to be at. Um, and again, I think, it, I think they're starting with the high-end model again because I think that's now going to be their design culture moving forward. We mm. saw it with the Taycan. We saw it with the 992 Turbo S. They're putting the big dollar cars out Make there your money first. first. Make your money exactly. First. Yeah. We'll get everybody excited yeah. about the big dogs. Mm-hmm. They should, um, because those are the essentially the, the fleet, the, the top of the fleet stuff. There, yeah. um, as much as everybody covets the GT cars, those aren't co- considered their fleet top of the fleet cars. Do you think zero to sixties in the ones now? One nine. I think it will be. I think it'll be close. It's kind of. It's going to be pretty. It's going to be pretty wild. I think it's going to be pretty wild. I mean, everybody was all out of control with the 992 turbo s about the house how much speed it delivers how much power it delivers all this kind of stuff i think this one's going to knock its pants off which is a big statement to make because that car is incredible already Mm -hmm. so if this brings it that that much level i mean like where do do you go from there you 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 have to go full ev after that and i think that that flight suit before you can decide to drive it 
And in that we talked about this before, like once they start this trend, it's only a matter of time till the full EV 911 shows up because I think this is the baby step to make everybody mentally okay with that. Mm. In my personal opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then, dude, I, it, this thing is just going to be unreal. I mean, it's still going to look like a 911. It's probably going to sound a lot like a 911 still, even though it's hybrid. So it's not going to. They didn't get into the numbers, but I'm, there's no way they're not going to be a flat six. What I'm thinking what's going to happen is that because the newer one, meaning the 992 mm. displacement, I think it's a uh, technical terms. I think it's like a 3.85 liter mm. flat six. It's in that car. It's twin turboed. Um, it's almost like a 3.9. I think they're going to drop the liters back down. I think it may, this Turbo S may be like a three liter, kind of like they're using already. Yep, and then compensate for it. And then they're going to dump that electric motor on top of it to kind of feed that beast to make it do whatever it needs to do. Four liter. They like that number. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what liter wise you'd make it, but I'm saying like, I think it'd be a three liter because it'd be a smaller, you you need the room. Like you need to make it smaller because if they're going to live together. Well, it depends on how they live together. They live together the way that I I would presume would, would be Oh, uh, with the Vaughn and setup, it's just in between the the transmission and the motor, and then it, it's a helper in there, so it's not yeah. really any more room. Yeah, I think it'll be like that, but it might. I think it'll be a little bit more yeah. in depth than that. We'll see. Um, then batteries have to go somewhere too. Exactly, and and they've said something about four hundred kilowatts as opposed to like eight hundred kilowatts because yeah, right. the size. Yeah, they just don't. They don't, have don't want have, the wires. Yeah, exactly, and stuff, yeah. they don't have this. They can't use the size of it. But I think you're probably close with 850. I think so. I'd see, I, I think the number, I'll give it a bigger delta, 800 to 900, I think is going to be the range with this thing. One well, um, me some wowing. When you turn it all the way on, then you get all yep. of it. But I think in the chill mode, maybe it's still like 500 horsepower. Or like maybe they do deal. it like they did the Taycan, where they do it like when it, if it's in launch mode, it goes you know to a certain Yeah, you get the full, you get the full tilt. Um, exciting times, scary times though, right? So what do you think... I want to like dive a little bit on this before you know, we go on break. I think we're four years out from a full EV. I, I don't. I don't think. I think once the hybrid hits, yeah. And so they have a line. They're they're not gonna. It's not gonna be too much longer. They're gonna follow it out with a full EV. Just because they just need to. I just have like conflicted have thoughts need. on this stuff. So do you ever think that this stuff? So do you think the main maybe line, not the whole line? Maybe just the turbo yeah. That's line. what I'm saying. Do you think the main line stuff maybe will start to get tinkered with hybrid wise, EV wise? But GT line is still going to try to stay NA because the reason why I have this conflicting mind thought is what we've talked about it. We've read about it. What the fuck about, about this flex fuel stuff that they're making, this special yeah. fuel Where's like this, at? you know, Where's the, the Martian at? fuel they're making. Yeah. Um, so is that designated just for GT cars? Do you, can do you get like a pass to dope. like you're the only one at the gas stations who allowed to buy that gas? Is if you have a GT three card, that's that that's would GT. That that's would be GT sick, things. right? That's GT Regardless things. of what year it is, right? Yeah, like you just have to go to the registry, registration, get yeah. put your VIN number yeah. in, and then yes, you're still paying for it, but maybe it's like your shell card, but it's your GT three gas card, and you're the only one who's allowed to buy that gas anywhere. I don't know. That'd be kind of dope. Man, there you go. There's another upsell, and it's Porsche fuel only, Man, or something. Way some, to exclude some everybody, crazy, right? Yeah. Why would a dick move, huh? Yeah. What about my 964? Well, just siphon the fuel out of that car when you get it home. <laughs> he used his GT3 car. I know he did. Exactly. Hey, can I borrow your GT3 card? I need, I gotta fill my air cooled up. I can't do it, man. I get busted. I'm gonna get revoked. They'll figure exactly. it out. <laughs> exactly. So like, yeah. So precious. It's like all thing. rationing nope. it. This my crate. Rations. This like <laughs> massive yeah. hysteria around it. No, that uh, going back to that, I just have that conflicting thought. Every time I see this stuff coming out, I know they're trending yeah. that way. Everyone's trending that way, not just Porsche. Um, but in the back of my mind, I still think I'm like, well, so what's happening with this I, fuel I hope stuff? That that's, I hope that's the, the direction they go. I mean, obviously, if they're using it in racing, that's got to be on their mind for the GT stuff. And then for their regular product lines. Yeah, okay. So hybrid. we didn't, we didn't really talk about this either. Do you think maybe if they do Regular. make it, is it is it sold maybe the way race gas is sold, and it's only sold maybe at the race track, and if you need it, you have to go to a race facility to get this stuff, and it and it and it charges you nine dollars a gallon. That's what what race gas is. Is it at that level? And I don't know are you chasing would, gas I, like that? I don't think they or, would do or it that. Like those VP air, uh, drums to your house, almost kind of like this. I mean, I, that that seems like super great to do but I, I don't think they would do that only because they're going to want to do uh or have viability across everywhere they they need 
They, they, yeah, they, they want they, mass they consumption, be right? Mm. You because if you're refining the stuff, you want as many people as possible to re, to to consume it. Mm. And you can have your PTS colored GT3 fuel card because that would be something too. You know that's gonna happen, <laughs> dude. Porsche people will buy that shit in a heartbeat. I think there's probably people like <laughs> after they up. listen to this, they're gonna be searching to see like, if it actually card? exists. Does this exists, and then there's some guy with tons of money is probably going to try to like patent that thing already and just like put his trademark on it that way like porsche tries to do it he'd be like you got to pay me for it well we'll see but yeah i mean it'll be interesting i think that could be the divide i mean if the e-fuel is in racing it makes sense to put it down in the gt line and then just let their regular lines follow suit from the turbo and yeah hybrid and then fully because since the other stuff is like i guess in their eyes limited production so they Mm -hmm. can still be combustible fuel and then the other stuff will just go hybrid, full EV on the other side of the like the fence, like where they create that, you know. Maybe that's what'll happen. I don't know, but I am still curious about this e fuel. Trust me, like guys, when I know something about it, you guys will know more about it too. Because I want to be able to use it in all of our stuff. Because there's still people you're hunting in air cooled. Yep. We're this isn't going to go away anytime soon. We're going to be having juice. classic. Ca- yeah, yep. we're still going to be cl- chasing these classics. I mean, even older GT3s now are considered classics. So we're going to be hunting these cars still for a very long time. And not just in the Porsche world. There's a lot of cars that are going to collectible status. Maybe you'll we'll get to this point someday where you can register all your cars collectible status. And you do get a gas car, whether it's a Camaro, whatever it is. Yeah. That you it goes are allotted. Your yeah, you're allotted so much fuel from that to buy or something. I don't know. Maybe rationed. Who knows? But uh, let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more. Right. right, we're back. So one topic right now, which kind of applies to everyone, um, not Porsche specific, but it will apply to California residents that have Porsche, especially in the turbo world, because obviously we know those cars are tuned and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So California has announced starting next week, they're going to test the ECU to see if it's at factory map settings. And if it does, it's doesn't, excuse me, if it isn't at factory map settings, the car automatically fails. So it's not even going to test it for smog like so it'll fail because it's not at factory settings. Okay. Um, so now all these maybe turbo cars and all this other stuff that have like tunes on it, if your car is basically non exempt, which I think is seventy six I know it's and, pretty old. And bo- yeah. Seventy six and below is exempt, I wanna say, like in California, and everything above that is not exempt. So you have to follow rules. So think about not even in the Porsche world. Start, dig a little deeper here. Think about all the JDM guys that are oh, running yeah. turbos on their cars, that are running turbos on their Civics, running turbos on their S2000s, the, the two Jay-Z swaps and a million other things. This is – California is already having a mass exodus if, you're not, if you don't know and you don't live there or not paying attention to that um, out of their state anyways. The, I think you and I discussed mm-hmm. this offline where the first time in the history of California – they actually had a decrease in population as opposed to an increase in population in the L.A. County area yeah. as far as, like, residential, like, people moving to the state. You know where they keep track of yeah, everybody. Yeah. It's like, oh, this many people moved there this year. Last year was the first year where they actually had less. I know where they went. Yeah. Florida. Well, well no. They're, anywhere, they're going everywhere. They're going yeah. to New Mexico. They're going to uh, Texas. They're, they're spreading out. Yeah, um, so... And we have friends in all of those cities, and they're telling us all these California people are moving there. Yes, but a lot of them are coming to Florida. Um, clearly, California doesn't give a shit whether you move there or not. Um, but this is just another added kick in the dick from California if you're a car person trying to operate and live out there. Well, that's the reason I always have an air cooled. I guess that's that's what they're... I mean, well, that's why in California... Mm-hmm. All those long hood cars, all of those cars, if they're been that, they, they're so coveted out there because they're all exempt. That's why any car that's basically like, like I said, that seventy six and under, those guys want it because you can tinker with those cars. You can put ITBs on that car. You can run full open exhaust because yeah. that car is not required to pass emissions. Um, so they're just going to have a bunch of jalopies driving around out there, apparently long term that's going to dump shit in the atmosphere which is going to count contradict what, what they're <laughs> yeah, trying to do counteract everything yeah it's going to yeah. be mad max style out there where everybody <laughs> else is just going to get something built in the 50s 60s and 70s and just 
literally dump everything they can into the atmosphere good for ben and yeah everybody else out there i just wanted to bring that up i don't you know what are your thoughts on that before we move forward is it just another california quirky it's like is it is this just going to the california like just like category yeah file file under california california weird is that what this is i mean i know they're pushing for evs like every day but I don't see why they need to constrain everybody else. To, well, they're going to, gonna, weird things. whether that they, they, people want to believe it or not, eventually they're going to be the only state out there someday. Once we get to that level, that's going to not allow any combustion cars in their state because they're, so. they, they like to be the spearhead on all this weird shit. So yeah, at least in LA. Well, I mean, it's, it's the, whole the whole state. state yeah. yeah. It's a, they, they just adopt the whole like law. It doesn't matter. Um, I think it's strange. Sucks to be in California. Glad I don't live there. Um, I love it there. Love the weather. I love the weather there. I love going out there. But uh, like uh, Notorious B.I.G. says, great place to visit. Um, So and that's what Mike lives his life by. Yeah, great place to visit. Cali, great place to visit. Um, So Macan AV is inching closer and closer and closer. Sale date supposed to be 2023, with a delivery date probably of 2024. Um, so the fact that you're going to be able to take, they're going to be able to take your money in basically a year and a half yep. on this car is pretty interesting. So we should see release when like this, but mm, probably beginning, beginning of the sp- year, sp- spring, yeah, probably or Q1. 2022. Yeah. Um, I think the most interesting thing about this thing is the price 58 K to get in on the base. Now, granted, that's not going to be the one it's probably got this long range battery and any of that other stuff. But the point of that is. There's a Porsche EV coming out that you can buy for fifty-eight thousand dollars. That sounds like a deal to me. That's that's pretty damn impressive. If you if you shop new Porsches and you know what the price points are yeah. on some of these things, especially with them promising a longer range. Yeah. So, I think, and I saw some design cues on this thing, which are kind of cool. They carried over some of the nine nine two GT three design cues, okay. and one of the main ones is on the hood so it has the the raked scalloped venting on the hood of the macan the hmm. ev is going to have that hood i guess they have to have cooling somewhere for batteries yeah but it actually yeah. looks pretty cool on it so it, it doesn't a, look it awkward yeah it doesn't look weird um how do you feel about 58 grand i know you got to feel good about that right i mean yeah i don't, I don't for a new ev would, yeah, i mean I granted this is probably just going to be that's going to be the one it maybe has like 230 miles of range or something nothing crazy yeah but it's still it's EV. definitely going to be still able to do new. city duty yeah and then the, the lease options on that duty. Uh, <laughs> i mean to be able to lease it would be super cheap to own it wouldn't be i mean that's not that's those, what i mean those are super super reasonable prices and think about if you live in one of these bigger cities and you listen to us mm-hmm. i.e la yeah. oh, <laughs> like well, we just I, went over this yeah. right and the law if you live in the law uh this might be a good thing for you. You can you can lease one of these, and yeah. you won't have to worry about it passing emissions, right? If you're not visiting, then you might want to look at these. Yeah, exactly. Because it's only going to get worse. But they look cool. Um, yeah, and then go hunt you down in 1970, your long hood, right? So you can yeah. just blow out all the emissions on that and be like, well, I got two cars, but only one of them really I'm saving the rates. environment yeah. half the time. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right? Um, I think it's great for Porsche to have this coming out. Um, Do you think it's weird that they put in the GTQs? Like, no, I don't. Okay. Um because I think we talked about this. We were hoping they do something cool with design cues mm. and do stuff like that because it is an EV. So it changes the engineering geometry of the vehicle, which allows them to do a lot more design cue type of quirks and fun stuff. Do you think it's pent up against the uh, the Mustang Mach E? Yeah, I do think, think it's that's probably going to be uh, it's equal, yeah, it's probably going to live in that class. Um, obviously, the Mach E is going to be a lot more affordable. Um, you. I would imagine you could probably get a fully loaded Mach-E with long-range battery probably in, in the 60s, I think, is where that's at. So to get a fully loaded, m- range maxed Macan is probably going to be high 70s, I yeah. bet, to 80. But if you just want the, the basic one to get around the city and maybe you don't even really need a car, but you kind of need a car and you you know, you want to be urban fresh and want to be EV happy and – this this is a good alternative, and oh. you're in your Porsche brand loyalist, it, yeah. it works. Something I heard uh, recently too is Miami Blue is now be going, is going to go back on the uh, PTS wheel and not the standard option anymore. Okay, nice. I think it should. I think it's a unique enough color where it shouldn't be standard. Um, I'm glad that's happening. Thank you for that tidbit. No problem. 
what happens right. when you buy the Cayenne. You learn how to talk <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Mr. Cayenne odor over Oh, here. yeah. Crushing it. All right. So let's close with this. I'm going to talk about this for a little bit because there's some validity to this, even though it's social media trolling. Um, so Portia on Twitter got hammered on the 20... 20- 21 Panamera mm-hmm. GTS. It's got 473 horsepower. You know, all these manufacturers are on social media, so they post yeah. these things, and, and you can comment and all this kind of stuff. Um, I mean, some of the comments on here were, were pretty savage, which are pretty awesome, and I want to get your take on it okay. after I read you some of these. Um, this one guy says, like, Genesis is making cars that <laughs> have the same power and half the price. Um, that's not, not inaccurate. He's not wrong. <laughs> that's not, those mm-hmm. are facts. Uh, one person said 473 horsepower was strong in 1959. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I had my Hemi. Yeah. Um, now, and there, it went on and on and on. I want to read you every single one of them. So the question I want to pose to you and all the listeners, is Porsche taking advantage of the customer loyalty uh, in their brand? And what I mean, I'll go a little deeper with the question, meaning like, okay, this car, for example, the one that the specific one we're talking about, Panamera GTS, 473 horsepower. It's 2021. They haven't really done a lot with the Panamera as far as changing it, like geometry wise, doing all these revolutionary things to it. They've just kind of like evolved, evolved a little, kind of like the 911. Yeah. But to be fair, it's a very expensive sedan. Like, you're but it's not- also at a comfort level. I mean, it's it's a luxury comfort level that the, the Genesis probably isn't. Putting out. No, I get it. But what I'm getting at is, is this is they're pulling at the heartstrings of Porsche loyalty in the sense of charging 150 grand for this car. You're not really getting a hundred and fifty thousand dollar product, is well, what maybe, I'm getting at. Because we're Porsche, yeah. are they getting? Not in every and and, and and to be fair, it's it, this is that example. I don't mean it. They're mm-hmm. getting lazy in every area of their business. I just, and this might go back to all the models that they make. Mm-hmm. I feel like in certain areas and certain trims and certain vehicle specific, vehicle specific Panamera, this one yeah. that they're kind of dropping the ball, meaning like, Hey, we make one. This is the price of them. We wouldn't even really buy it, but fuck you guys love Porsche 165. What do you say? And you're, you're like you're on the lease, and so the lease is like, coming up. I can like, yeah, new one. buy a freaking Ford Mustang. It has a base GT has 500 horsepower now, bro. Yeah, but you got to look at it the, in the holistic sense that there is all the engineering and all that tech behind the car outside of the motor horsepower. I mean, for we I know get that, that though. But a lot of this technology across the board, yes, is okay. I'm I'm comparing Ford. It maybe it's yeah. not on the same level. Yes, the touch points probably plastic, and are they shit? Yes. Mm-hmm. But does that make up for the extra hundred thousand dollars? Well, the engineering does. There's engineering we don't see that did it cost an X like. Yes, uh, I, I think a, you're being a little bit of a homer it, with it, though. I think like yeah, the Porsche fan over here. Yeah, you like Porsches or something? <laughs> well, but, but I, I I tend to kind of agree with some of these trolls on this a little <laughs> bit. Um, I feel like okay, because you've done all the R and D and maybe you've been fleecing so many. People, I, I, they're not putting that much because it's evolving. It's the evolution okay. of this car. They're not putting brand new R and D into the Panamera every year. That's bullshit. If they say that they're doing, they're not. But do you think that the people that are buying this care about those specs, or they just like new cars? No, I think that they're Porsche loyalty, and I think that why I pose the question yeah. is, I think Porsche is taking advantage of them. I, my answer is yes. I think they are taking advantage of them. What do you think? Do you think they're taking advantage of them or not? I think if you're when well, they're buying it, I guess I I don't see it. I see it. if I felt like I was taking advantage, I would I wouldn't buy another car. I wouldn't continue to do it. But I guess so. I guess they're in the circle. Yeah, I I feel like they're not. I don't think they're getting all of their money. Is what I don't think. That's what I think. Meaning the customer. Hmm. I don't think you're getting all your money there with that car, well, especially well, at that price point. If I'm spending one fifty, hmm. one thirty to one fifty, depending on how you option the damn thing. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't agree with that. Maybe that's why they don't sell a fucking ton of these things because maybe uh, people are smart enough to say, no, fuck off. I'm not doing that. Or, you know, and then the, like the Uber ri- like- and then the Uber rich people that buy them. And then there's always the argument of like, oh, it's not a, like you said earlier. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to like discredit Man. you, but the, I agree with that argument too, but I also disagree with it where there's kind of that, well, you know, you're paying for this, you're paying for that. Yeah. Okay. You're paying for the secret sauce, but at the end of the day, it's fucking mayonnaise and ketchup. We get it. 
Like, we figured it out. It's Thousand Island. Yeah. Thanks, in and out You know? It's... I don't know, man. I just... I feel some of these cars that mm. they sell are just really in the stratosphere because well, some they, of the, the sticker on line. some of these things are just shocking because you're like, this thing's not special. But but they are in line with their peers, though. That's the thing. Like, the entire luxury market are the same. That's who they battle against. That's what they put those numbers against. That's what the market holds because the demand's there. If you had the option to make more money or make the same amount of money year after year with well, your product of course, I understand your business. I understand wise. business 101. So I get it. I, I'm just I'm making a point because this went around on the social media s- standpoint. This was very public. It was very shouty in a lot of people's faces, and they got a lot of torment on this thing. And I want to say that these people aren't exactly wrong. I'm not saying they're 100% yeah, right, yeah. but I don't think they're too off by saying those things about them. I think Porsche could get a getaway with doing a base, a GTS, and then a turbo model. Yeah, that like we've three. talked about That's that. That's it. That's all you need because your base is, eh, you don't really care. GTS is that in-between. Yeah, and it trail. goes back to that what we talked about what and I guess maybe I'm in the old mindset too. We, we did the exercise of what 50 grand gets you. Maybe yeah. 150 in my mind doesn't get you what I think it should get you. And maybe I'm the broken one. And maybe all these people are saying this are the broken one I too mean, because I that's a lot of fucking money still. And for me to drive a mommy sedan it has less than 500 horsepower in it like yeah. that's shameful in my mind. I mean, that's enough to make you brand swap in my opinion. Because you want to make sure you want to get everybody wants to do that. Like no one wants to just throw money is away. Your, is your mom like? She's like, yeah, you know, five hundred. I really needed that five. No, that's no. plenty of her for her. Uh, yeah, but but I'm I'm you know giving it a, a yeah, bad yeah. name by saying that stuff. But I'm getting at the point of the people that are hunting a Panamera or something like that. You think that. they're just zombie den and they don't? They just they're just doing it again. They're just doing maybe. it again, and then here's the money. They're not really. Yeah, maybe. They're not really looking at what they're doing. Or they're being strong-armed into it. You buy this GTS, I'll get you an allocation. Well, I mean, there, that's, another, that, that's you know, another issue. That's, and that's, that's, the, probably, that's the back alley, that you know, shell shuffle back there. Follow the shell. Where was that? Oh, guess what? No one gets a shell. You bought a GTS. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> True, but, that was rigged. Yeah. Guess what? No one wins. We win. We, the house always wins. Um I think there's some validity to it. You know, I don't want to like harp on it too, too, too much, but uh, I, I feel strongly about it. I, I, and maybe it's just a sign of the times. Maybe I'm just turning into a curmudgeon. I don't That's know what it is. Um, what? I mean, what would you take your 150 and do with it? I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with 150. At least still, would you Panamera? Uh, would you still? Would you be loyal, or would you go out? I what mean, do you what mean? Like you, if I if I have if I have I'm, yeah. I'm having to buy a sedan. Is yeah. that what you're telling mm-hmm. me right now? Yep. I and I have to buy new. Yeah. That's it. You had to walk into any of the ship, you got to take your 150 and you got to... I'd rather buy like a loaded Macan, like turbo or something okay. and save money. I think you can get one of those loaded for like 120. I don't know. That's probably what I do. Save 30 grand. And I think it has more than 500 horsepower. It probably does. So I it's, probably, it's probably more... Uh, the game is called I win. Economical. <laughs> and you might be able to tow something with it actually, right? Like I think Maybe. it can tow a little bit actually. I think the Macan can tow some because I have seen guys towing their track cars with them. Uh, good thing we haven't reviewed any, so we shouldn't we shouldn't know. Yeah, I, actually, I know for a fact now that you say that we have <laughs> we have um, for sure they have towing capability. Yeah, they do. I just don't. Um, um, that's, uh, is it not the exact same or close to uh, what the Cayenne does? Mm, I think it's less because I think those cars, unlike the BDK, Cayenne, Tiptronic, yes, yep. mm. yeah, different transmissions. Yeah, I learned. I forgot all about that until I went to put it in manual mode the other day. I'm like, oh boy, this is terrible, <laughs> and back out. Yeah. So let's do a little wrap up. You've had your car a whole week. How whole are you week. feeling about it? Love it. It's my favorite thing ever. Yeah. No, it's fine. I, I'm, Dad mode all day. You got the air conditioned seats. Oh yeah. Uh, Does that no, thing have no, no, no AC seats. Okay. That was the one. The one thing that it didn't have. Everything else it's, it has. See if you'd have paid one fifty, you would have got that. I know. Oh, actually, <laughs> um, I think they had them in the. Yeah, actually, you might have been right. Well, the GTS didn't have them, obviously, because they have suede. The Alcantara. It, it was just. Uh, I think it was a new option. It could have been optioned, I think, in that that year. I can't remember where I kept seeing it. Like, I saw it on one. The Cayennes, the base Cayennes had it. But, okay. this, but the Cayennes didn't. I don't know. Whatever. whatever. They optioned everything else out. I, I like it. I like it more than I thought. It's You're going to keep it the way it is, like with the wheels? Or are you going to go, like, safari style? What I wanna, are you going to do? I want to put aggressive tires on it. And right now, those tires don't fit those wheels. So it's probably going to have to have different wheels. I'm definitely going to change the exhaust because it sounds like a Prius. <laughs> it's just down the road. Nothing. No sounds. 
Yeah, but um, you can be like business savvy and you can have your calls in there. You can do everything. That's it's true. like doing your thing, right? But it's very quiet. It's, did you know those have like triple door seals? They're, they're, it's rated for like three or four feet of water. Awesome. Yeah. I know mine doesn't have all that stuff. I'm first gen. That thing is yeah. like. Let's, let's put in the water and see what yeah. happens. Yeah. My thing's damn near Volkswagen. That is a Volkswagen I'm driving around out there. Like, but I still like it. It's fine. That's yours, fine. yours is it way feels ni- the same. yours is way nicer. It feels the same. <laughs> yours is way nicer. It feels <laughs> like my thing is like this. Like I'm like man, <laughs> what <laughs> what is that? I think they're six years apart. Yeah. Like what what six years looks like? Well, I, they whoever owned it before me must have garage capped and drove it to lunch and back to the garage because there's. Like, uh, to me, this car, and I, and I bought it from a Porsche dealership, which I didn't expect to do, and I paid more than I was going to. <laughs> but all that said, um, it didn't have any scratches on any of the trim. It didn't have any, like, wear marks. Where I know. The only thing I've seen, like, wear marks on are than the door seals. Yeah. That's it. Now, which I was like, well. It's probably a not a first-time as, Porsche owner at yeah, that thing. Even the underside's clean, so it's probably never, ever, ever seen dirt. Yeah. Guy ever. probably, guy or girl probably has... Lady. Other, it was other lady. Kathleen uh, was her name. Other Porsches. She's the Bluetooth. So, yeah. Should dial Kathleen. <laughs> ask her some <laughs> questions. In. Calling Kathleen. Call in. Hey, what's going on here? Why is this thing such in good shape? Why? <laughs> who, like, who inspired you to order the carbon fiber pack? That's all I want to know. Was this, was this your choice? <laughs> no, I'm glad you got that. And you're still hunting something else, right? Yep. Always. So, surprise, surprise. We'll see something, I'm sure, in the yep. next few months or month or so, I should say. Got it's got you got you don't have that much time because nope. you got like two months before our drive. See the right? camera car or, or a yeah. uh, normal car. Oh, that reminds me. Actually, while we have everybody, if you're going on the drive and meaning like you're signed up, confirmed yep. already, Aaron sent an email out. So check your spam, check your yep. emails. We're trying to get a head count who's all staying at the hotel, the group hotel that we're staying at, because I need to call and get us all blocked parking mm. together. Um, and clearly, if you're not staying at the hotel, don't chime in. But if you are staying there, I need to know because after I get that headcount, I'm going to see if they can like rope off an area just for us to park together because I know it's going to be crazy because it's going to be Oktoberfest weekend too. So mm-hmm. we need to make sure that we have secure parking um, instead of having to like scour around this entire lot and park all our cars at the end yeah. of the day. That was a little crazy it's mainly last year. for the It's mainly for the end of the day driving yeah. because when we get back, um, usually the town's pretty full. Mm-hmm. Everybody's already parked up. There still will be. It's not like they're going to run out of spots. Every room has a spot. The yeah. difference is, is it just might be on the other end of the freaking parking lot, which that far, you don't want to. You don't want to park yeah. twenty cars and play Tetris out there if you don't have to. Just story. Um, so again, make sure you respond to that email. Um, I don't have anything else for him. Do you have anything else for him? I don't. Awesome. We want to thank you guys so so much uh, for being loyal listeners. Uh, we love you guys, and we will see you guys in the next one. See you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of PCAR Talk. Connect with us on Instagram at PCAR Talk or online at PCARTalk.com.